Fighter, you ready? Combate Global! Oh, what a punch! What an incredible fight! Can you believe what you just saw? We have a champion! There is the beautiful Miami skyline. Well, don't let the beaches fool you. They produce some amazing fighters out here in Florida, including the fighter we're about to see next. That's right, homegrown talent. And that's another thing, Jimmy Smith, alongside Rodolfo Roman. One thing about MMA that is so difficult is you're conquering dreams, right? When you talk to David Zellner about his goals, he said, it's my dream to be a success. I've worked so hard. I want this to be my full-time job. My opponent is in my way. He sure is. And Isaac Corrales, don't be deceived by his record. I know he's coming off of two defeats. But he's the type of guy that never underestimated because he can come back and get a KO whenever he wants. Don't sleep Outstanding stand-up, great Muay Thai from Rueles. Zellner focused. Omar Amador will get us started. Entrando a la jaula, David Zellner. It has been a story since the start of mixed martial arts. When I started out, everybody had a job and they fought on the side. You just couldn't make enough money, especially early on in your career to do this full time. Zellner's dream is to do this full time. I don't want to have to have the day job. I'm working twice as hard as everybody else. He sees this in Combate Global as his ticket. He's motivated. He's doing it right here tonight. Yeah. It's the second time around we see him in, or third time, oh, the second time around we see him inside the house. The last time was back in. June of 2022 when he took on Ramon Vizcarra. He's coming off a victory against Juan Rodriguez by way of decision, which was a very close fight. But what was very impressive about Zellner is he got some very vicious knees and when you get into clinch, he tempts himself to leave that chin open. So you have to be very careful when he goes up and against Skyla Ruelas, who has that strong Muay Thai and has bare knuckle background. Let's have Omar bring in the Muay Thai specialist. Y ahora su oponente. Isaac Ruela! He said something about uh, chin high. He said something about don't leave yourself vulnerable. That's because uh, Isaac Ruelas, Muay Thai, Pan American, bronze medalist, he knows how to get it done inside the ring with those skills. Talk about the clinch. He's well versed in that as well. What do you see as the difference in his style tonight? I'll tell you this, this guy's a very durable type of fighter. Don't don't go by the record. He's a, he has a 500 record for and four. Last time we see it around, he took out Patrick Lehin, who has amazing stand-up, and after that against Gabriel Villanueva. And what makes this guy very different is that he is just the type of guy that will go right at you. Look, you can hit this guy with a kitchen sink and he's gonna come right at you. There's, there's nothing's gonna stop this guy, but great Muay Thai. But look, this is MMA. And, and when we stick to one martial art, it's just not gonna work. You have to bring the all-around type of fight here inside La Aula, especially against a guy like Zellner, who wants that victory, who wants to continue on to victory. But this is the most win for Relis here tonight. Morales right now loosening up, getting ready. He knows at four and four, this is a must win situation. As we look at the head to head, similar age, slight height advantage for David Zellner. Reach about the same. The advantage here, not in the numbers. Let's go to Omar Amador to get us started. Ya estamos listos y yo sé que ustedes también para este encuentro pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división de peso pluma. We are ready and I know all of you are for this bout set to three rounds of five minutes in the featherweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Lorenzo Toledo, Richard Ring Jr. y Ricardo Celis. Y ahora sí, damas y caballeros, el momento ha llegado. The time is here para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Sube con un récord de cuatro victorias y una derrota. He steps in with a record of four victories and one loss. Vistiendo de blanco, wearing white. Registró un peso oficial de 144 libras. He steps in at an official weight of 144 pounds. Es de Merritt Island, Florida. David DC Machine Salmon. Y ahora 
su oponente en la esquina roja Now introducing in the red corner Sube a la jaula con récord de cuatro victorias Cuatro derrotas He steps in with a record of four victories and four losses Vistiendo verde y colores mexicanos Wearing green and the Mexican colors Registró un peso oficial de 145.6 libras He steps at the scale at 145.6 pounds Es de Tijuana, México Isaac Muelas Ruelas El referee para este encuentro Juan Tommy Santana Blue corner. In that row. And he, they are ready to go. It is David Zellner in the white trunks, Isaac Ruelas in the green trunks. Muay Thai fighter ready to break Fight. through. Fight. But can he do it against the Florida native? We are underway. Oh, he's going to just wink that Ruelas. You know this is going to be a good fight, Jimmy. We got Ruelas coming off those two defeats. He wants to get back in that win column. Zellner just carrying on, picking up wins. The problem, of course, as you said, you got to look past the numbers. Four and four. There's a tendency to overlook your opponent. You see right now Zellner moving forward, having no problem taking space away from Ruelas. Can't look past him, though. Ooh, nice leg kick. Yeah, and Zellner's that type of guy. He's a very offensive fighter. If he finds the, the right piece, he's going to control the fight straight down to the takedown. And we know that that's a key here when you take a stand that type of fighter. Easy double leg. And it's Isaac Ruelas off his feet. Good job, though, scrambling back up. That's one of the keys. Someone takes you down. Don't let them, no, make them spend energy energy keeping you there. And we're going to get this here in the clinch work, landing some knees. You'll see that Zellner does leave that chin open. He could sneak in a knee or two. So far, Zellner showing that physical pressure, leaning forward, that chest-to-chest -chest position. Isaac Royal is trying to lift him back up, trying to maybe get a clinch position, but not making the takedown easy. Zellner trains with a great camp at the Fusion Excel with the likes of Mike Perry, Philip Rowe, and Morales with the Antrim Gym. Another well-known gym out of Mexico. So these dudes are just uh, top-notch trained. You know you got to spar with uh, Mike Perry. You're going to have some rough nights. Yeah. <laughs> That dude go oh, nice, snappy kick. kick. And, and there's that, that Muay Thai there from Ruelas, but following up by... See Ruelas doing very well at medium range. Long, straight punches and kicks. He's doing a good job of catching yeah. Zellner coming in. And what I like is Zellner's attacking that, leg, that, that lead leg in the calf area to break down Zellner, to slow down his pace, which is it's, it's a great tactic. See, Once see, again, see how, accurate with the right hand. See how Zellner, if, if, if he starts getting in that bra, that's, that could be the uh, not a good outcome for him. Just like you said, Rodolfo, yeah. as he gets confident, that chin starts coming up just a bit. Right, that, and that's that's the key here. You need to just protect that. You can't get wild, especially with Ruelas. He's not gonna he's not gonna stop. When he took on Patrick Lehane here, who just has top-notch striking. He clobbered every 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 so often, Lehane, and he's the type of guy that has a good stance to protect his chins at all times. So there it is. Another good right hand over the top from Ruelas. Look at Zellner's hand just keep going down over the time as he gets as he gets. Oh, beautiful time. step in knee. Now that right hand is landing every single all time, time. Rodolfo. And keep working that lead that left that lead leg for Ruelas. Oh, oh that beautiful one right. Stun Zellner for the first Ooh. time. Zellner backing up like a slingshot. Those other That's right hands e. were accurate, but didn't seem to sting that oh, much. Now they are starting one, two. to accumulate. Ruelas feels confident, Jimmy. He does. Beautiful uppercut. Should be confident. Everything he's throwing is landing on point. Look at the maturity of Rodolfo. Not going crazy, looking for the finish. Almost, almost back to square one. And Zellner taking it to the ground. And he knows that he can have some great success here. Just have some strong ground game here. Also a much needed breather. That stand up was not going the way. The man who calls himself DZ Machine. David Zellner putting pressure on. And also he's got to be clearing the cobwebs in this position. Uh, and, and now, but, but Rennes there, I did see a little mistake. Thankfully, 
corrected himself, but he was going to give the side of his body. And, you know, a little more, he would have given his back. He never want to be in that position on the ground. The question is, what will Ruelas do on the ground? In a, in a round, he's so far winning. There it is. is he content to kill the round, but no, almost getting his back taken. Yes, transition real quickly here. Although he needs to be careful. You can see from his angle, he's working that rear naked. He has some wrist control, Zellner. So far, only one hook in from David Zellner. You see, he can hear his corner yelling, other hook, has to yep. get that left leg around. It's not easy to do from here. Barrella's good way of putting in that knee whenever he attempts to pull up the leg. The problem is can defend the back naked. and his neck. If he see, I think he, he, he does have the chin down, though. He worked it out real well. Zellner apparently letting it go. I think he realized what you said, Rodolfo, was on the chin, not the neck. And there we go. Great transition out of Ruelas. Now Ruelas on top. Oh. 15 seconds left. Can you feel? Watch out for the knee here. Zellner getting close, keeping it chest to chest, going for the guillotine. It may not be enough time, Jimmy. Seconds left in the round, oh. and there's the bell. Stay by the bell. a very tired David Zellner going back to his corner. He spent a lot of energy trying to get the finish at the end of the round. Also, get ate some down. really sharp right hands with Muay Thai specialists. Great combination. And, and, and let's take a look back at some of the work here. Zellner did feel very confident, but as the confidence grew, he kept those hands down. Ruelas kept pushing forward, finding any holes where he can connect, and he surely did, as you saw there in that clip. Well, it's about recovery now. Who comes out strong in round number two? Welcome back. Round number two, David Zellner versus Isaac Ruelas. Round number one, really about the Muay Thai of Isaac Ruelas. Good leg kicks, good right hand over the top. Zellner able to get a takedown toward the end of the round, but end up letting him back up. And it's starting once again, as they always do on the feet. Ruelas trying to find his range, Rodolfo. I, I can tell you that Ruelas did his homework in the previous fight that Zellner had. His opponent was having a field day landing in knees in the clinch and just landing kicks. And that's what Ruelas is doing in this chance right here inside La Jaula. I mean, he nearly almost submitted Zellner at the end of that first <laughs> round, but as far as the stand-up game, he's doing what he needs to do against Zellner, a guy that's very offensive, will come right at you. But in this position, great shots to the body with the knees. Good gonna... composure from Isaac Ruelas, not, you know, doing enough to, to, to not get taken down. I mean, you get, don't get the energy, the idea is expending that much energy against the fence, being very efficient so far. And I think what, what, what Ruelas here, is, it's almost like he's playing possum, right? He's letting Zellner come in, and once he feels that he gets the bait, there we go. No surprise, Isaac Ruelas up on all judges' scorecards. Every single judge gave him round number one, 10-9, based on those right hands. Had Zellner hurt a couple times. But Zellner now wanting nothing oh. to do with that minimum, no, that, no, that, no. that medium range striking. Yeah, you're in, and also, you don't want to get in that clinch position. You nearly set it up so nicely. Zellner smelled a great attempt there for front kick, deep. Well, that's great. Right cool kick. now, right? Michael Chandler, Anderson yeah. Silva, that yeah. kick right up the yeah. middle. <laughs> Gotta try it, it make it, sure it's ever get that highlight. It's, it's, it's so hard, though, to just fight. It's all about timing with that kick. It really is about timing. Into the tie plum goes Isaac Ruelas. Smart move from David Zellner. Drop his head. Go back to that double leg, single leg position. Yeah, any, any minute now, if Zellner finds that opportunity, he's going to switch levels and just try to take it to the floor. That's a nice short right hand on the way out from Ruelas. And you can see the confidence is built up by Ruelas. One thing about the style of Zellner, this physical pressure style, we see it with, with, with Kobe Covington. It takes a lot of gas. gas. Yeah, that's what to say that, yeah. And, and we've seen it, that gas here, that gas tank come down here. Not like the gas prices have gone down. It's the complete <laughs> opposite. And a cut around the left eye of David Zellner. No, no surprise at all. Oh. Right hand has consistently found a home. Also that leaping knee right to the ribs. Ooh. 
Uh, you know what I like about Ruelas? He has that Muay Thai background, but he's modified it to fit the MMA style. You know, because when you have that Muay Thai, you have that stand up with the back leg, and that, that lead leg will always kind of just kind of just laying, laying out there, right? But you can't have that in MMA. Done a good job adapting his style. Big right hand over the top from Ruelas. And that takes a lot of time, Jimmy, to perfect over time. Oh, nice knee to the center as well. To, to, incorporate it, to incorporate it in your fighting style, it takes a bit of time to really adjust and, and just find your way. I've got to ask, Rodolfo, are we getting into desperation takedown time uh, when it comes to... Um, uh, yeah, but yeah. When it, not just the, 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 the desperation of the takedown, but the cut over the eye. If this gets checked out, we don't know how bad it is. Once again, going for that guillotine, bad guard pull, in my opinion, for Ruelas. That was a big mistake here, and Zellner has Ruelas pinned to La Haula, and so much, you know, this is, this is how you use La Haula to your benefit. Pushing him here in a position where Ruelas cannot escape a full mount, could be here all day as long as Zellner continues to be active. Zellner with the full mount, raining down punches. Nothing fight ending yet, but keeping the pressure on with a minute left. And Rodolfo, they might check this cut. I was a, check yeah. this cut in between rounds. Zellner's fighting like he needs to finish this now. Oh, they get the Allen bar, maybe. It is tight. It is extended. Can Ruelas get out, or will we see the comeback from Zellner? I think what's slippery is all that blood that comes into play, though, Jimmy. It is, and right now, Ruelas fighting his way back to his knees. He on the arm, he Whoa. is out. Wow. Oh my God, what toughness from Isaac Ruelas Zellner. Desperate now to finish strong with 30 seconds left, covered in blood. No quit in that man. And Ruelas now able to pour it on. Zellner put a lot of energy into that armbar, trying to get the finish. Yeah, Zellner is just... It is all over the canvas, all over both of these fighters. It's a bloodbath. And we're going to find out in about 12 seconds if it's a, a fight-stopping cut. But Ruelas will hang on to see a round number three. Full mount to end it, but not quite oh. enough. What a fight. And there wow. you see Isaac Ruelas, understandably tired, had to fight his way out of mount twice. Man, what's concerning though, and we talk about how dangerous the sport is, Jimmy, that cunt that Zellner has, wow, it's, it's like, nasty. you know, have to see if we can look at but great yeah. work there, it changes from the elbow, and I think that's where it opened up with that elbow from Ruelas, no, no, and then no, throughout no, the match, no, a blood bath. Escape from the armbar. Aggression at the end of the round, but will it last in round number three? It has been an incredible two rounds. Round number three might decide it all. David Zellner, you see right in front of you from here in Florida, Merritt Island, and his opponent, Isaac Ruelas from Tijuana, Mexico, the Muay Thai specialist. And look at the face of David Zellner. Now, the face doesn't always tell the story, but it does in this fight. Doctor now checking out the cut over the left eye. Not only the face, Jenny, but when he got off the stool, Zellner was. But right now he's limping. I mean, he's yeah. clearly right now it's blood to glory. Right now, that's basically what's carrying him on. Isaac Morales looking relaxed, had to fight his way out of a very tight armbar to end round number two. But oh, oh beautiful yeah, and that's body been working shot. for him. That's been working for Morales. And so is the step in knee, using that against the ribs as well. And that's been the strategy of Zellner. Get in, get the takedown, keep it physically close. But Ruelas has exacted a very heavy toll for this kind of fight. The, the question becomes, Jimmy, is does he have the power in this third round to even take down his opponent? If we just come against him off the stool, he's limping, he's not all in there. It's just his body and his soul pretty much is existing in La Hala. It takes a lot of energy, and Ruelas, Relis feels looks quite in the fight. He's up there right now. 
Uh, looks relaxed, looks composed. Well, the fight has mostly taken place right here, standing up in his wheelhouse. And you know, he, he's fought, he's fought in Muay Thai his entire life. He knows how to pace himself at this range. That's been the key so far. And, and I'm impressed the way that every time Zander takes him down to the ground, and he's able to just transition himself, even attempt to get to some submissions. Well, the judges oh. have it all tied up. Holy David Holy. Stelner winning the last round. 10-9, so it is 1919. Whoever owns this round wins the fight. That's and that both of these corners matters. know it. Yeah, Remember, right. they get it before we do. Right. They should know, they have to win. David Zellner trying to make this look like a wrestling match with MMA gloves on. Wants nothing to do with the stand-up of Ruelas, which has been deadly so far. That's when you have that Leon Edwards moment, Jimmy. Right now, look, you're tied 1-1. You want it, go do it. Go get it done. Quit feeling sorry for yourself and get it done. Some of the best advice ever. The problem is Ruelas, you know, he's not getting taken down right here. It's a good job of staying on his feet, but he needs to circle off and make right. some more time. Yeah, he needs fight, to right? do a little something. Oh, he's uh, attempting to spin. Elbow from Zellner, but nobody home. But in these positions, you know, it, it seems a little bit like Ruelas is content to kind of hang out here rather than circle. Right, and he doesn't need that right now, knowing that it's 1-1 one, one right now of a round apiece. Ruelas needs to take this fight to the center of La Hala, where he, had, he has had much success with his Muay Thai. So far, Zellner, the aggressor. And that right there, pressure, that, that right? impresses the judges. Yeah. The fact that he has, he's holding on to the leg, he's being active. Ruelas is just pretty much just laying on him. You want to be active, push off from those hooks, there we go. Circle out. Now finally some space, David Zellner launching the right hand over the top. Ruelas circling, but right, and Ruelas is active. Yes. Ruelas with his body gestures, just calling him out to box it out, but let's face it, Zellner knows that if he takes him down a couple of times, he wins this fight. What is the expression, mama didn't raise no fool. I'm not getting in a boxing <laughs> right. match with this guy. Absolutely Who not. has lit up the left side of my face. And the Muay Thai knee. beautiful knee. Nice body kick as well, but always his back against the fence. It's making these, these clinch positions easy right there, for spin out. to get to. Yeah. Right there, Ruelas right, to spin out. I know he has that leg right there. Straighten up that hip, get out of that position. and it Nice counter knee. And right there, Jimmy, here's a good chance. That there he goes, circle out, and does take it to the, to the center. Minute 30, this Ooh. fight very much up in the air. Oh, well, it's oh, beautiful, beautiful series combo. of uppercuts. Right uppercut followed by the left. Now, Ruelas is showing a little bit of exhaustion himself, keeping his hand down, no longer up. And another beautiful oh. right, leaping in with the knee, but cannot afford a takedown with a minute left to go in the fight. He was going for the last sprint with a flying knee, but Zellner just wasn't there for him. Zellner now, leaving it all inside the howl. Throwing everything he has. We are under a minute left in round number three. Every time they exchange, it's Zellner more on the receiving and Ruelas sharp with the punches. Zellner's doing what he needs to do, attempting takedowns. He's gonna impress the judges. But even, even though, right, to us, right, we, we may say right now that he has the upper edge, but you never want to do it, leave it to the judges. We've seen it many, many times where you think he may win, but he doesn't. They say don't leave it to the judges. Well, you know, there are times when you have to, but you want to leave every oh. strike, right hands like that, and La Jaula can take your punches home with you. This is a, a really good fight, and man, it's kind of uh, tough to judge. You can't question the heart of Zellner. No. He has heart for days, but was it enough to overcome the technique? The Muay Thai of Isaac Ruelas, well, guess what? That's up to the judges now. There's the final bell. They will decide who walks out victorious. I don't want to be a judge right now. Neither do I. Neither do I, Jim. They have it's going to be a really close one. Yeah, they have a tough job in front of them. We'll find out what the judges think right after this break. Don't go anywhere. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción, after three rounds of mucha más acción, all the judges are in agreement. Todos los jueces están de acuerdo con números de 
29 a 28 with scorecards of 29 28 all in favor by the winner to the winner by unanimous decision todos a favor del ganador por decisión unánime de Tijuana México Isaac Ruela Rodolfo I don't mean to make you sound smarter than I think you are but as you said who cares about the numbers right four and four means you're more motivated that combination at the end I think that that would kind of change the mentality of the judges even though he was going for the take that wasn't enough incredible performance from Isaac Ruela the action continues after this Can't say it enough, this is a dangerous sport. We had so much action in the last fight. Now, undefeated records on the line. It's a cliche, but I'm gonna say it. Someone's O has to go. Someone doesn't leave undefeated. We'll have Omar Amador bring our undefeated fighters in. Entrando a la jaula, Adam Ortiz. You see Adam Ortiz getting ready to go eight and five as an amateur. He says, I love wrestling. That's what got me into this, but I think he's been bitten by the striking bug, right, Rodolfo? We've seen it a million times. Not wrestling my face, but once you get addicted to that power of cracking somebody in the face, it's addictive. I think we're looking at an, ad an addict right now. I, I can attest to that. My background, <laughs> I started off with that. Hey, and there's a little insecurity once you start doing the boxing, right? But once you get the hang of it, Jake, I mean, that's, it's just a whole big ride after that. I've been a martial artist for quite some time, I'm trying to leave it on the line, but there's a lot of pressure between these two guys. Yeah. Undefeated, 3-0, and and many people think, Oh, how do you feel? You're undefeated. There's no way you should lose this fight, especially when you're going up another guy. It's just like, so you're always going to feel better than the other one, despite that you're undefeated. <laughs> a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure in here going into this fight for both these guys, Jimmy. Also, those learning lessons, right? You don't know what you don't know until you need to know it, right? It takes sometimes that loss, that step back to propel you forward. So it can be a gut check moment having such a, a tough fight for women. Also, this is Combate Global, right? We are on Paramount Plus right now. I mean, people watching this all over the world. Earlier in your career, that could mean a lot of pressure for a guy like Adam Ortiz. And now, Adam, this is the second time around we see him here inside Combate. So we've had a little feel for it, but hey, you get nervous all the time. Take it away, Omar. Y ahora su oponente, Luis Fernando Chavez. There is the stride, the march of Luis Chavez. You know, he's, what you hear all the time, right, is you've got to be out of your mind to try this sport. You have anything on the ball, what are you doing getting punched in the face for a living? And that kind of attitude, he says he's run into all the time, propels him forward, right? It's people ask him, what, what, what am I doing in the gym all day? Hey, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be a success, right? You don't practice Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu in the sun. It's not volleyball, right? You don't do it for fun. <laughs> you have to prove that you're great. He wants to prove he's great every time you talk to him. And he's improving it all the time. He's showing you hands. His record, 3-0. and oh, Last time we saw him compete was back in July of 2022. When undefeated in 2022 and in 21 grabbed his first pro victory. All of them here in Combate Global. So he's been in the big stage already. And now going in undefeated, listen, this is just an opportunity to impress the matchmakers, to move up the rankings. How are you going to do it? Is it going to be fashionable? Now, here's an interesting point, Jimmy. Now, when you look at Fernandez or Chavez, you have two wins by way of submission, one by decision. When you go to Ortiz, this is the guy who has two victories or three victories by TKO, ground and pound, and then we got one submission. So they all have that finish. Yes high percentage, this could be a very quick fight. Right, and Luis Chavez though, purple belt, it takes a long time to get comfortable off your back against a heavy wrestler in an MMA situation. Is that purple belt enough? We're about to find out. Let's 
Take a look, of course, at the head to head. Similar age, look at the height advantage, four inches for Adam Ortiz. Also a three inch reach advantage. That's a lot to get, that's a lot to get inside of. Let's go to Omar Amador to get us started. Ya estamos listos para continuar con mucha más acción en este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división peso gallo. We are ready to continue with mucha más acción for this fight set the three rounds of five minutes in the bantamweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Dorian Marisola, Lorenzo Toledo y Richard Green Jr. Y ahora sí, damas y caballeros, el momento ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Entra con un récord invicto de tres victorias. He stepped in with an undefeated record of three victories. Vistiendo rojo, azul y negro. Wearing red, blue and black. Registró un peso oficial de 135 libras. He stepped in at an official weight of 135 pounds. Es de Tucson, Arizona. Adam Kid Solo Ortiz. Y ahora su oponente en la esquina roja. Now his opponent in the red corner. Also steps in with an undefeated record. También viene invicto con récord de tres victorias sin derrota. Vistiendo blanco y los colores mexicanos. Wearing white and the Mexican colors. Registró un peso oficial de 135 libras. He stepped in at 135 pounds. Es de Ciudad Juárez, México. Luis Fernando Lichi El referee para este combate, Christopher Minioki. All right, bring it in, gentlemen. I want a good, clean fight. Quiero una pelea limpia. Please listen at all times and protect yourself all the time. Escúchame todo el tiempo y uh, cuídate todo el tiempo. Si quiere tocar guantes, toca ahora. Buena suerte a los dos. And we are underway. Adam Ortiz in the blue, red, and black shorts. You are looking right now at Luis Chavez in the tricolores. Of course, the Mexican flag. Trunk, do you like how that rolls off? You, I, you like that? I, you I, like I was going to see that. I'm going to have to quiz you and Chris, Thank the referee, you. to see who has better Spanish by don't midway even, season. Don't, I'm from L.A. <laughs> don't even get me started. We are underway, though. Adam Ortiz, <laughs> Luis Chavez. <laughs> undefeated, both of them at 3-0. and But someone's O is going to drop tonight. Ooh. You hear that suspense, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, there is tension getting us started. Referee waiting for the signal that the judges are ready. We're just waiting there for. And, and this, oh, right, this is right now when your body just tenses, <laughs> the heart pumps. It is so much worse right Start now for Adam. Heavy. <laughs> like you haven't even moved anything, but it feels like you ran a marathon. Right, it's everything <laughs> right now flowing through the body of Adam Ortiz, Luis Chavez. All the electricity, all the attention, are you ready? all the are adrenaline, you ready? and we are underway. Round number one. There's Chavez. I mean, these both these two guys, just very fast pace. There's no cruising around here. They're never, they're never gonna have their cars on neutral here. It's gonna be constant. And how does Adam Ortiz use that reach advantage going in for an early takedown? And that's for Chavez. And I, I, you know, we've had this conversation. Sometimes when you are the smaller fighter, it gives you that chance to work more of the body to bring your, your opponent who's taller than you in. Also to be able to, oh, able to work those inside kicks. Oh, beautiful, beautiful lateral throw. Great stuff right there from Adam Ortiz. He's making it look oh so pretty. Abby, you see a little bit of that inexperience. Beautiful right. throw, but not quite settling down. To not keep quite as weight. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You get the takedown, but it takes some jujitsu skill to stay on top. He's going to get another opportunity to do it. Like another clean, takedown from Adam Ortiz. Like the clean touchdown, but there was a little bump there before we actually take down <laughs> to our final stop. And some good right hands. Ortiz trying to soften up Luis Chavez, who finds himself on the defensive early. Talk about his jujitsu purple belt. Good scramble on the ground to get back to his feet. He wants to keep where they're standing. 
and, and I find it, you know, I, I'm not that, that tall myself, but when I compete, I do take on some guys that are taller than me. And you don't want to go to the ground when you get a guy that's as big as you. You know, you want to try to keep right. it standing. And also, able to work. all that weight on you just wearing you down. But right now, Luis Chavez, I think it might behoove him now to maybe slow this fight down. Adam Ortiz spending a lot of gas on yeah. that early offense. Chavez, though, needs to be cautious. He keeps those hands down. He's just throwing a hand. Easy maker. single leg. And so far, you know, if an opponent has superior wrestling, they're taking you down. Got to make them spend some energy. Can't, can't give up these easy takedowns. And so far, Luis Chavez is. Make them work for it. Yeah. And, and it, it comes down to really closing the space. Nice push push off. Off. And Luis yeah. Chavez. He had a good chance of staying in the knee. But what I, what I see about Chavez, you, you almost get a little desperate when he gets up. And if Ortiz can find that hole, he can connect something there that could finish this off real quick. We call it get back, right, in MMA. You want your get back. Oh, he took me down. Now right. I'm going to do this. Right. When you want a little distance, slow things down, think about it a little bit more. Chavez so far caught in that reactionary mode. Bad move, giving up his Very back. Bad. One hook in. Very bad. Especially against a taller opponent, long legs. Putting the stretch in, looking for the rear naked. Maybe. One hook in, but it does not matter. This does not look good for it Chavez. It is tight. Very There's tight. a tap. Easy early submission for Adam Ortiz. Wow. We knew he had the wrestling. Turns out he has the jujitsu as well. He remains undefeated. Four and O. Oh. Making it look oh so pretty. Very nicely. Fired up the young man from Tucson, Arizona. Got the back, got the choke. Amazing work from the fighter who the, relied on his wrestling, used everything tonight. He used everything that he needed. They made it look all so easy. Got a great, wonderful victory inside the hall. It remains undefeated, Jim. Uh, awesome. We'll make it official when we come back. A dos minutos 57 segundos del primer asalto. Two minutes and 57 seconds in the first round. A rear neck choke, un mataleón hace que este combate termine. This fight comes to an end by submission por sumisión para el ganador or the winner, Adam Kid Solo Ortiz. Just getting started, a bright future for this man. Adam Ortiz now 4-0 via first round submission. Talk about I really like my striking. I'm getting addicted to it. It was his jujitsu that got the finish. And now he's able to put that on, on his resume there. They got another great big submission pick for myself. They talk about me being a wrestler. I got more arsenals in my pocket. I showed it here tonight. And what I liked about this Jimmy is that he kept himself close to we talked about that get back. When Chavez will get back, he'll strike and he was able to just relax, come down, and take it. Plenty of maturity from the undefeated fighter, but the action rolls on at Combate Global. Welcome back to Combate Global. Look at the head-to-head. -head. Marisa Ruelas versus Fernanda Larios. Similar in age, similar height, slight re reach advantage for Fernanda Larios, but it's about who gets this to the ground and who is active on the ground. Might be the key to this fight. These young ladies ready to go in La Jaula. Let's go to Omar Amador to get things started. Damas y caballeros, ya estamos listos para este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en un peso pactado de 123 libras. We are ready for this fight set at three rounds of five minutes at a catch weight of 123 pounds. The judges are, los jueces son, James Lazaro. Richard Green and Richard Green Jr. Y ahora 
Damas y damas y caballeros, el tiempo ha llegado, the moment is here, para un combate Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Sube con récord de una victoria, dos derrotas. Sit, she steps in with a record of one victory and two losses. She is wearing black and white. Vistiendo blanco y negro. Registró un peso oficial de 124.2 libras. She registered at an official weight of 124.2 pounds. Este, she is from Chicago, Illinois, USA. Marisol Ruela. Y su oponente en la esquina roja. And her opponent in the red corner. Sube con un récord de una victoria, tres derrotas. She steps in with a record of one victory and three losses. Vistiendo todo de rojo, wearing fire red. Registró un peso oficial de 121.4 libras. She registered an official weight of 121.4 pounds. Este, she's from Guadalajara, Jalisco, México, Fernanda. The referee for this bow, Christopher Miñoki. Bueno, Miñoki está listo. Ya las artes marcialistas también vendrán las últimas palabras ya para arrancar el duelo. Tanto Larios como el caso de Ruelas se ven profundamente. Los mexicanos también están ahí. La esperanza y evidentemente el ambiente ya que suene la campana a través del combate global. La jaula, la jaula, la jaula está lista. Va a venir en cualquier momento. Se está preparando el referee. Observando, sí, a los jueces. Cuatro puntos cardinales. Va a sonar la campana. ¿Lista? ¿Lista? Dale. And we are underway. Earlier this year it was an absolute banger. Marisol Ruela, you see her in the black, taking on Fernanda Larios in the red. Fernanda Larios, of course, a big fan of Ronda Rousey. She said, that's what got me into this sport. That's why I love MMA. Her opponent she from Mexico. She even the hairstyle going, Jimmy. Yep. She even get the hairstyle going. <laughs> that's true, that's true, has a <laughs> hairstyle as well. And Marisol Ruela, no surprise, started boxing, encouraged by her father to go into MMA. Right now, Fernanda Lario starting out very aggressively. Last time we saw Fernanda inside uh, La Jaula, the combate was back in uh, September. She was part of the reality show, took on Naomi Young, took that victory by way of TKO. And fighting is an everyday thing for this young lady. Her boyfriend competes here in Combate Global and took on David Martinez, her champion. So when you have a, a, a partner, a boyfriend, a, a husband, a wife, whatever it may be, I mean, this is an everyday thing. It's like just waking up and brushing your teeth. Now, I know how competitive we are with our spouses. I don't like to lose at any game at all. So, <laughs> therefore, MMA, that'd be a little bit of a problem in my house. If I, if, I'm the only one who does it. If, if I <laughs> learn one thing in life, Jimmy, your wife is always right. Yeah, don't compete. Bite the bullet. Yeah, sure, I lost. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and neither one of these ladies right now taking a loss, pushing forward. I like the stance of Fernanda Larios. Tight, hands high, bounce in her step. And, Good activity on her feet so far, and right now, Marisa Ruela looking to stalk her down a little bit. Yeah, Ruela's has great stand-up here, great striking, boxing, and that's gonna be here, because Larios does have some, some of that wrestling that could come in and benefit him here. Nice straight right hand from Oof. Fernanda Larios. Ruela's though staying tight, nice leg kick. Opposite stances. It is Marisa Ruela's in that, that, that southpaw stance. Good sidekick right to the gut. The thing that's beautiful here about a combate of Elijah is that we see these women, these men, just develop and fall yeah. right from the start. It, it, and it's unbelievable, Rodolfo, the improvements you see fight to fight. I mean, it's almost like a different fighter. That's why I say under, you know, 
seven, ten fights, you don't know what you're getting. That person's going back to the gym and learning a whole new skill set. 15, 20, okay, that's how they fight. But less than that, you might get a different fighter every single time. And I think that just makes it more exciting because yeah. you, you don't know what they're going to bring if you're used to, oh, he's a wrestler. And then all of a sudden, he's just this awesome boxer. Like, what happened here? <laughs> But it, it yeah. goes to the hard work that you put in the gym, in your camp, that you're able to work. And, and we've seen it here with a lot of these fighters out of Latin America where we know that jiu-jitsu has not made this strong presence, but now it's coming out there now. Now it's making its presence. It's, it's, it's spreading over and over. We've seen it with Javier Reyes, a guy that trains out of Colombia. He did his entire, entire camp in Colombia. Didn't leave his country. Yeah, that used to be a rarity. Now it looks like you can get great MMA training all over the world. And we're seeing it here with these two ladies. Beautiful transition to the head kick, but nice high hands from Marisol Ruelas. Always keep that hand up, Coach O's, you say. It's like, a, it's like you're talking on the phone. But so far, the activity favoring Fernanda Larios. She is... Just tick-tock back. Oh, oh, beautiful right hand! And that is all she wrote in round number one! Wow! That switch kick confused the heck out of her. Woo. Beautiful knockout for Fernanda Ladio. She gets it done in round number one. Incredible! Saw a beautiful knockout at the hands of Fernanda Larios. Full of confidence, full of energy. Let's have Omar Amador make it official. Una derecha a tres minutos, 43 segundos, el primer asalto. With a beautiful right hand, three minutes and 43 seconds into the first round. Para la ganadora por knockout, for the winner by knockout, de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, Fernanda Larios. There are beautiful knockouts, there are technical knockouts, there are scary knockouts. I think that one was all three. That one's one for the book. Pretty, but yet vicious. Every time we're in the howler, the fighters bring it. Fernanda Larios just brought it with that right hand. Welcome back to Univision Studios. Combate Global, Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. So much action so far tonight, but we're just getting started and it all leads to a main event, a, a, an awkward stand-up fighter from the UK taking on the wrestler, the grappler from Cuba. It doesn't get a whole lot more different than that. It's gonna be an interesting one. When you look at Dayron, he's a vicious dude but he's finally taking on someone that has a lot more experience. So this is gonna test him. Is the hype behind him? We're gonna find out here today. And now Grayson, all the way from the UK, he's flown all that way. He hasn't competed for some time. That victory is on his mind. He set his time apart from MMA to focus on his personal life. Now he got that straight now. Now it's back to get, it's time to get back on the horse and get into MMA. How sweet it would be to get a victory and go back to the UK. A contrast in styles, a contrast in careers, a contrast in attitude. Let's see both fighters. Look at the takedown, the ground action. Lazaro Deiran versus Nathan Grayson. And we talked about him before. Grayson talked about being in prison and essentially MMA saving his life. The emotional response he has when he talks about this sport, it isn't about X's and O's. Adam Ortiz, Luis Fernando Chavez. We saw that happen earlier tonight in a similar kind of thing. Both guys very emotional about staying undefeated, but only one can do it. One man can do it, and Adam Ortiz is the one that came out on top, making it all so easy with a submission victory. Great fight so far. The prelims never disappoint, Jimmy. None of it disappoints here in Combate. <laughs> we'll have mucho más acción. 
Uh, I'm putting you on the spot yeah. the way I like to do it. In our main event, you talked about the contrast in styles, the contrast in, in attitudes. Tactically to you, what is the difference in that main event? If it's one thing, what is it to you before we get started? It's going to be the wrestling and, and, and they're on. You know, that's, that's going to be the key. That's the difference between the two. He's superb wrestling, and it could make a whole change in this fight. But let's see what Grace has been doing. He's been out of action for some time. Has he been working on the ground game? Because when we look back, the last time he got submitted. All right, we're about to get it started with the ladies. Stay with us. Welcome back to Combate de Gobal. On the left side of your screen is Jillian Noel. On the right, Melissa Amaya. Melissa Amaya, Rodolfo, who talked to her, said Jillian Noel is a zombie. She comes right at you. Amaya, technically a bit more of a technician. Is that underselling the skills of Noel? No, it's not, it's not understanding. It's not an insult. It's, it's, it's not an insult. Anime, Ab right? Absolutely not. In fact, I would be scared when taking on a fighter that claims to be, has that zombie-like stature because it's a type of person that's never going to quit. You can hit them with a kitchen sink and they'll continue and continue and continue. They're never going to quit. And when you fight a fighter like that, you have to bring in your all because you know it's going to take a whole lot to knock that person out or submit that person out. Melissa Amaya, skilled on the ground. She talks about wanting a brawl in La Jaula tonight. You see Melissa Amaya, four years older than Jillian Noll. Two-inch reach advantage for Jillian Noll. Same height, but can Melissa Amaya keep the pressure at bay? Does she have the right hand to back off Jillian Noll? That is the question of this fight. Let's go to Omar Amador to get us going. Todo está listo para este combate, pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división peso mosca. Everything is ready for this bout set to three rounds of five minutes in the flyweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Ricardo Celis, Dorian Mirasola, Lorenzo Toledo. Y ahora sí, damas y caballeros, the time is here para un combate global. In the esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Entra la jaula con un record de tres victorias, dos derrotas. She stepped in with a record of three victories and two losses. Vistiendo de azul, wearing blue. Registró un peso oficial de 124.8 libras. She stepped in at an official weight of 124.8 pounds. Es de Spokano, Washington. Gilliam Valkyrie. No! Y ahora su oponente en la esquina roja. Now her opponent in the red corner. Entra con un récord invicto de cinco victorias. She stepped in with an undefeated record of five victories. Vistiendo bla rojo y negro wearing black and red. Registró un peso oficial de 125.2 libras. She steps in at an official weight of 125.2 pounds. Este Chaparral, Nuevo México, fighting out of Spokane, Washington, Melissa La Mamba Amaya. Y el referee para este encuentro, Juan Tommy Santana. Good evening, ladies. We weren't able to lose back on such a good, clean, fair fight. When I say stop, you stop, defend yourself the whole time. Any questions, Greg? Any questions, Blue? Just one of the viewers. My fight. Jillian Noel in the blue shorts, always smiling in the red top. We have Melissa Amaya undefeated at 5-0, and oh, but we saw earlier tonight a war fight. between David fight. Zellner and Isaac Ruelas. Ruelas just 4-4 four and four in his record. Well, guess who won, right? Throw the numbers out the window. <laughs> Don't go by the numbers. Don't go by the record. Anyone can have a bad day. And Melissa, or right no, attacking on the ground right from the start. No surprise there. Going straight for the ground. Excellent takedown pressure on the left side, that pressure pass. And if you listen to No, she said, like, I started off as a ground fighter, but over time, I became more confident in my standing game. And that's what we've been seeing here when she competed last time around inside La Jaula, taking on Itana Alvarez and Jennifer 
True you. But as far as Amaya, you know, Amaya has taken on strikers as well. You know, like I asked her, and she said she knows just a different fighter. We talked about it, right? That, that, that zombie type of fighter that just comes at you, nothing's going to hold her back. And she's going to compete her. And, and Amaya's happy that she's getting this fight because, hey, I'm going to be tested, right? I felt confident with my hands. I can finally do it because I know that someone could beat me to it, but let me show her how good I am. And what does Jillian know do? She flips the script, goes for an early takedown, feeling that physical pressure. And that, you know, it's, it, there's also a zombie style in jujitsu, which is pressure, 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 pass, right? Never give your opponent any space. Right now, Jillian O trying to do that. Good rollout by Melissa Amaya, but the physical pressure from Noel continues. And, and as a fighter, it's so frustrating when you prepare for something. And when it starts, it's like the other thing. So that's when you quickly need to adjust. That's when that experience comes over time. Take your shots. Give me some work, ladies. And I wanted to point out here, Jimmy, Campbell McLaren looking at this fight very closely, howling aside. <laughs> that, that, that means he's really, he, he has his eyes focused on this fight. He knows there's no a pressure. Here. No <laughs> pressure. Right, the boss right in front of you. Yes. Right now, Jillian No going for another takedown, scooping Ooh. up beautiful double leg into the guillotine. That's not tight enough to get it done. No guard, no guillotine. The cor corner just said there's no guillotine. Don't worry about it. And these are two great camps, Warrior Camp. Jillian No yep. trains out of Washington State with Pablo Alfonso. And then on the other side, Melissa Maya was sick jitsu, home to Rick Little. And uh, Juliana Pena has trained her. Michael Chiesa has trained her. So these are two well-trained fighters. It's a battle of the Washington State because both these ladies live out there. Yep. Right now, Jillian No. Fighting very, very smart, not giving Melissa Amaya, who does have an excellent submission game, any space at all to use that guard. So far, the guard pretty low. Now trying to walk the leg up, looking for the arm bar. Jillian O trying to watch that right arm. Good angle from Melissa Amaya. Great job on the pullout. That's that composure that Amaya has. She doesn't freak out. She takes it little by little. And she time to get positioning. But also good timing on that escape from Jillian Noel, who's now going for the guillotine herself. Bad move, losing top position, stuck in half guard now. Crazy to think that we thought that this was going to be a brawl. Amaya thought this was going to be a brawl, but it has not started so far in this first round. Tactical beginning, now Amaya trying to step over to pass to that right side. Good job from Noel getting her yeah. guard back. Yeah, good stuff of Noel preventing Amaya from moving from this position, keeping those hands, those legs up. One thing though, you know, it's 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 you're only physically prepared for the for the fight you train for, right? And so you wonder if both these ladies thought this might be a, a stand-up battle. It burns you out like crazy if you didn't prepare for the kind of you know static jujitsu game we're seeing now in round number one. And, 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 and frustrations, emotions come into play because you thought it was one thing and you get the other thing. So, but that is when that training, mentally, physically, comes into play. That experience comes into play. Amaya thinking guillotine again, going for it. Now in full guard, huh? not quite full guard, half butterfly. Not yet, but no good way of ripping that hand apart. Trying to keep this fight to the, get this fight to the, to the feet. Now 45 seconds in a fight where Jillian Noel has found her grappling, Ooh. leading to success. Can Amaya get this fight back? Working behind the jab. Finding space in that awkward striking style of Jillian Noel. Zombie style, running into punches. Right at you. But no, though, kind of no, Amaya feeling it out. Kind of had a little fun in there, you can see it. But no, just very aggressive, just coming right at you. Amaya staying behind the stick, that lead jab. No, true to what Amaya thought. Yep. Up good way up, like no. a zombie. Good takedown yeah. defense. Good sprawl leading to some top pressure, which is appropriate. It's how this round started. It's how it's going to end with Jillian Noel on top. Yeah, Amaya's puzzled. Just, just look at her facial reaction there. A little bit of frustration. It's yeah. kind of like, dang, yeah. like, this isn't what I expected. I got to you know, reset and figure things out. Last year, coach goes into play, and she talked about her coach. She said, hey, she's not the type of coach that says, hey, good job. Good stuff that you did. And look at it right here, right from the start. Good way of no connecting here, but then switching the gears, taking Amaya to the ground, using the howla to her advantage. Now Amaya keeping on in that position for the guillotine for no. 
little wait, bit of a wait. rookie mistake going for it from half guard when you have top position. Yeah. No. She's looking for Gaten, like I told you, and she's going to oh, look at Pablo Afonso, the corner man of no telling you to keep going for that groundwork. But what I was saying about Amaya's coach is he's not that type of coach that's, hey, good job, go get her. No, it's like, figure it out. And that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> it can be. She's got to make adjustments. Still a smile on the face of Jillian Knoll as we start round number two. Once again, it is Melissa Amaya in the red top, black shorts. Jillian Knoll, blue trunks, a white top. The right hand from Jillian Knoll, but Melissa Amaya trying to take advantage of the fact that, as she said, Jillian Knoll comes in zombie style. And on paper, you know, you look at Amaya as being the person to take this fight with an undefeated record of 5-0. and oh, You look at no 3-2, and two, but never go by the numbers. No. As I said earlier tonight, David Zellner, four and one. Um, and Isaac Ruelas, four and four. Ruelas put on, you know, so, some, some great Muay Thai in that fight. Ended up the winner. Throw the numbers out the window. Good right, right hand over the top. Hey, what has to happen here from Amaya is you're not going to stop. No, no has a lot of gas. He's not going to quit. Great cardio. You're going to have to cut corners. And if we go to the open scoring, Jimmy, yep. Rightfully so. And no surprise here, Jillian Knoll, 10-9. All three judges' scorecards, round number one. But as you said, a pressure, and we talked about this earlier tonight, you know, the, the Diaz brothers, Colby Covington, those pressure styles. Those guys have endless gas tanks for a reason. You have to have one to put physical pressure the whole time. It's a special fighter. Not, yeah, not everyone can do it. Guy, yeah. Not everyone can do it. It, it, it takes, it came Velasquez, right, at the heavyweight right. division. I mean, when you took a, talk about heavyweights having cardio, you could flip the coin, but he was one of those guys. But with no, she's resilient. She's gonna come at you. Lots of gas in the tank. Maya, she has to cut the, cor the corners and see if now she use, uses the groundwork. She's gonna have to cut her. No's not gonna quit. Well, so far she's been content. And when I say she, I mean Melissa Amaya. Content to keep this on the feet. Right. To your point, when someone's coming at you, you usually change level, take them right, right down. So far, no even attempt to do that None. from Melissa Amaya. Content with the stand-up, but she's finding success. She's finding some shots. There are some opportunities. Hands are coming down a bit there sometimes for no. So the, the opportunities to land a shot or two are there. But look at that. Good she's right giving hand. you that left leg. Knoll's giving that left leg. I was working that inner thigh to break her down. There it is. She was listening to you, Rodolfo. <laughs> I think she heard you, bud. <laughs> So far, putting money in the bank, staying behind the jab, staying composed. Sometimes you need to remind Oh, him. nice right hand. You, you need to remind your opponent to check the case. And she needs to keep doing that to stir her pace. Look at the punches and kicks, the strike, the total strikes for Noel. 85 punches, six kicks. Amaya, 39 punches, 17 kicks. But I think a lot of those in round number two, right? In this second round, it's been Amaya throwing and landing a bit more. Round number one, strike-wise, a bit of a wipeout for Noel just because she was on top. Yeah, Amaya's shots have not been wasted. The, the no. shots that she takes connect. You know, it's funny, when, when you watch MMA with people who don't understand MMA or kickboxing, they go, well, why don't they check? If you haven't been doing it in the gym, you're not going to build that Never instinct gonna do it. in the cage, right? It's, 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 in La Jaula, it's, it's something you have to train, right? You're not going to suddenly turn no. your shin toward a kick. No, yeah. no, it, it's, it, it, it becomes a habit. Yeah. It becomes a habit, and that's what you need to get it to. And it's about, it comes, the sparring sessions in the gym, Check, 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 check. Advice is, if you don't check in round number one, don't you bother checking yeah. in round number three. You're not gonna have a leg anyway. And, and you see it a lot with, with guys and girls that maybe make that transition from wrestling to maybe boxing. It, it takes yeah. them a while. It's just counterintuitive. I'm gonna turn my shin for a kick. But, right. You know, when you do it well, like in Thailand, it's like kicking a wall. <laughs> <laughs> right now, Melissa Amaya doing a good job with kicks and punches. Good step in leg kick from Jillian Knoll. We went from a round number one that was almost exclusively on the ground to a round number two where there's been kickboxing in MMA gloves. Much more the fight that Melissa Amaya expected. Well, this is the fight that Amaya wanted in the second round. Is she up for the test? So far, no slowdown from Amaya, if you were concerned. You talked about the, the cardio of, uh, of of Jillian Noel, her ability to keep pressure on, but Melissa Amaya's had to angle and move and stay away from that pressure, and her cardio so far it's has held working, up. Right, you know? and it's working. She adjusted. She definitely adjusted. 
through that first to second round. She's making Jillian Noel have to get through the jab to get her style going. That stick, that left hand is in the face of Jillian. Now Jillian Noel committing to the takedown for the first time. Tom is late in the round, 10 seconds left. Is that enough to turn this fight around, a round that has been going the way of Melissa Amaya. But Jillian Noel will finish out on top. How frightening is that as a competitor? <laughs> you, you, you hit somebody with punches the whole round, and at the end they get up smiling. That that is just insane. And, and, but it's a mental game. And let's take a look back to some of the work that took yeah, place. Beautiful yeah. right there from Amaya following it up from a left hook. Okay. But no vicious striking. But good way for Amaya to step in and ran into that right hand, as you saw that 2 1 1 combo. No, though, trying to finish off the round by the takedown but it was a little too late as we were getting ready for the last chapter of this bout gym. Now, the just look at him argument in MMA doesn't always hold up. I think this one kind of tells the story. The stand-up has been going the way of Melissa Amaya. When you look at the face of Jillian Knowles, happy, she's thrilled, swollen around that, that right eye. Much more the worst from where Melissa Amaya looking very, very fresh. It's a yin and a yang. One smiles, one is serious. One smiling but lumped up. The other yeah. one's <laughs> serious but fresh-faced. Once again, around, uh, round Ooh. number three, Melissa Amaya in the red top, black shorts. Jillian No, blue shorts, white top. Stiff shots from Amaya. I, I think she figured out the puzzle now, Jamie, and it's, it's that footwork to keep her at bay, preventing her from Noda coming in. And she's not, I, I don't think at this point she's gonna attempt to go to the ground. She's gonna try to best to keep it up. Because it's been working right now. Those shots are coming in clean. Now the, the onus definitely now on Jillian Knoll to change things up. Ooh. Got the takedown at the end of round two, but as you said, Rodolfo, too, too little, too late. Gotta get it done earlier. You wanna change this fight around. My a good way of adjusting to the fight. They flipped the script on her, but then got it right back where she wanted it. That was like she had like a wrestling stance there. Is that even awkward? Yeah. Herky jerky, difficult to time. <laughs> but dangerous too, because you're putting your, your, your chin at nice and low. Fibers with that good yeah. knee up the center, strong uppercut. That's a problem. Yep. Pretty much what we expected even from the Steven. judges. Even Steven. <laughs> You know, if Melissa Maya wanted a brawl, she wanted the kind of war that would test her, she got it. She got everything. Ground, <laughs> stand up, the whole nine. This, this just shows how much she's evolved. Yeah. Shows how much work she's put in the gym. Relaxed, confident, and stay in the gym. Tick tock, tick tock, side to side against the fence. And so far, Julian Noel hasn't been able to cut off La Jaula. To, 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 to make Melissa Amaya fight from a small space. Hasn't been able to do that yet. It's just so quick. She's going to keep coming at you. Batteries for days, Jimmy. Nice inside leg kick from Melissa Amaya. How much you love that kick when that, when that inside thigh is exposed. Oh, so beautiful. Been hit by it, oh. but also hit some of it. I can tell that slight limp you have. I figured it come from something like that. <laughs> right now, Julian Noel trying to put pressure on. But when I hear about it, you recover. It takes so long. <laughs> give me bad. Give me flashbacks. I don't need this at all. <laughs> oh, slick right hand from Melissa Amaya. Julian Noel. The zombies. Well, Korean zombies taken. Well, my yeah. the zombie might be might be hers now. Perhaps. I think she's Perhaps. earned it in this fight. Yeah. yeah. She but wide just, awake, though. Yeah, so <laughs> walking through everything is Jillian Knoll. Hey! Melissa Maya's got to be thinking, what well, to hit her with to, 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 to put her down? Two but, minutes left to go in round number three. But what I'm liking from Amaya is that she's adjusted. You know, the shots come in and she moves. She'll land, she'll move. What does a good coach say? Hit, don't be there. That's right. All right, hit and be gone. And that is so far what Melissa Amaya is doing. Excellent coaching, you can tell. She doesn't admire her work. You gotta be almost like a ghost. Attack and not be seen. Minute and a half left. Jillian Noel from the body lock position. 
kind of half body lock, half double leg. So far, not committing enough to get this fight to the ground. And could she find herself in another position, Rodolfo, of under a minute takedown? That's not going to do it in this that, fight when she's getting up off. It's not going to be enough time. Here. Single leg. Yeah, if no one wants to get this victory, she has to go for the Hail Mary here. Yeah, sell out for the submission, sell out for the big Fedor right hand on the ground. Look at Amaya, they'll be very careful last time. She put her opponent in this position. She ended up winning by arm triangle choke. And there's, there's enough time here, Jimmy. One the C guard up. is Melissa Amaya trying to keep that physical pressure off, but... No, Jillian not fighting as though she's behind in this third round. Yeah, and, and, and if Noel thinks that this is enough to impress judges, not enough. Short punches, but Melissa Maya doing good work from her back. Nice short elbows, controlling the head. The hip, no. Yeah. Yeah. The hip moving around. He's trying to get that leg up there to find something, but it's going to be at or perhaps time. Uma Plata, depending on her flexibility from this position. He's doing, yeah. doing a good job of staying safe, but is staying safe enough? The end of a round in which and, she and has right been there. on the defensive. And she's done it many times, Amaya. That's something she needs to protect. And then she gets up, she gives her back. Never want to do that. And Jillian Noel, all smiles, of course. Swollen eyes, swollen face, couldn't be happier. That's a woman right there who loves her <laughs> job, Rodolfo. I love that. Love this sport. But the technique of Melissa Amaya, perhaps a bit too much. Omar Amador will make it official right after this break. Después de tres asaltos de mucha más acción, after three rounds of much more action, vamos a las tarjetas, we go to the scorecards. Judge Ricardo Celis, Wes Ricardo Celis, sees the fight 29-28. Judge Dorian Mirasola, sees the fight 29-28. And Judge Lorenzo Toledo, where's Lorenzo Toledo, sees the fight, 29-29. Oh, for the winner, todos para la ganadora, por decisión unánime, by unanimous decision, Melissa La Mamba Amaya! No surprise there, Melissa Amaya. Like a, I think it was a 29 29. So that's a majority that's decision. A majority decision, yeah. Yeah. Majority yeah. decision yeah. new record 6 and 0, oh, still undefeated. No surprise it went that way. Excellent striking rounds 2 and 3. Great stuff. What, what, what's very impressive about Amaya, and I, and I saw when they read the decision, similar to the last time that she won, wasn't happy with her performance. And more than likely, she'll probably tell you that. I wasn't happy. I could have done more. That's what makes you a better fighter. But let's take a look at some of the highlights here for Amaya. She adjusted work quickly. That is what's impressive about this young lady. No matter what you hit her with, she started off no with the takedown. Then Amaya quickly adjusted, started moving around, and then took this fight to the feet where she had much success. At the end of the fight, no one tried to go for that Hail Mary, but it just wasn't there, not enough. The takedown wasn't there for her. No submission opportunities. It was Amaya all day. Good way of adjusting, good corner, and it just shows you how much this young lady has evolved, and rightfully so, remains undefeated with six victories and no defeats. There she is now, six and zero. Oh, but this is the reason why the punches, the kicks of Melissa Amaya, all the ones from Jillian Noel, two and three punches, that's a lot. Mostly on the ground, mostly short, didn't do a ton of damage. Look at the accuracy, 90% for Melissa Amaya. Kickboxing, it was a wipeout. Right, and, and, and rightfully so. Noel took a lot more shots, but did they land? No, Amaya's shots, they weren't wasted. When she took them, she made sure to connect. Yeah, she was crisp, she was accurate, good work with the jab, excellent work with the right hand, and constantly moving. She called Jillian Noel a zombie. She's gonna come forward, she's gonna eat a lot of strikes, I gotta be prepared. Melissa Amaya, to her credit, was ready to move 
to angle, to stay busy, to keep the jab pumping for 15 straight minutes, and that's what she did. Man, in her revision, Jimmy, Maritza Sanchez is up there. I'm sure she had a close eye on this, because that could be a fight to make very soon, Jimmy. And what we have next, Jennifer Benagos. You see him right there. He had a four-fight win streak. One and two in his last three, looking for some redemption. Jair Perez is a guy that lost to some of the best, but let's take a closer look at both of these fighters. Si quieres disfrutar de mucha más acción, te invitamos a Combate Global, el evento de artes marciales mixtas que te hará vibrar cada semana. Llama ahora y consigue tus entradas de forma gratuita. No te lo pierdas, te esperamos ya. MMA is not a train. You don't stay on the track all by yourself. You, there's some off-roading. You got to get back on the highway. That is exactly what Jennier Penagos is looking to do. Four fight win streak, but one and two in his last three. Can he get things, as we say, back on track against Jair Perez? Let's find out more about this very motivated fighter. A nivel profesional he competido en Uruguay, en Brasil, en Venezuela y estar aquí en Combate Global ha sido una experiencia totalmente diferente. Es estar realmente en las grandes ligas y enfrentarte a atletas élite que solo se dedican a esto. He estado desde pequeño practicando deporte de combate y representando mi país y quiero dejarlo lo más alto posible. Cuando estoy a punto de salir a pelear, lo que estoy en mi mente es repasando todos los posibles escenarios que pueden ocurrir en el combate, pero realmente al final Todo lo que uno haga en el entrenamiento es lo que va a salir de forma instintiva. A ver, un mensaje para todos los venezolanos fanáticos del MMA. Espero que me estén apoyando. Les prometo que voy a dejarlo todo y que a toda costa me llevo esa victoria. Os. We said earlier on in this show that Combate Global is all about that global, right? You're representing your country. As he said, Venezuelan fans, I am here for you. Is that pressure or is that motivation? We'll find out tonight. But also, another place we would love to see you is here right now, Univision Studios. The crowd here, you wouldn't believe it unless you see it. So come check it out. Si quieres disfrutar de mucha más acción, te invitamos a Combate Global, el evento de artes marciales mixtas que te hará vibrar cada semana. Llama ahora y consigue tus entradas de forma gratuita. No te lo pierdas, te esperamos ya. Welcome back to Combate Global inside the Univision Studios. You've already had a ton of action tonight. It is about to continue. Jimmy Smith alongside Rodolfo Roman. When I look at Jair Perez, one thing I think is he's had his share of losses. He is 7-3, and three, but one loss against Justin Vasquez is the one that keeps him up at night. We can all deal with loss, but are you making the adjustments necessary to win? He says he has, and he is focused tonight. El MMA es, es todo para mí. Peleo porque esto es mi vida y me dio una razón por la cual pararme todos los días. La mayor lección que me ha dado el MMA en mi vida es que no existe el talento, sino el trabajo duro y la dedicación. Mi estilo de pelea ha cambiado un poco. Creo que ya casi no uso mi lucha para mis combates. Me he vuelto un poco más striker. Yo creo que la clave va a ser mi juego de lucha y de jiu-jitsu. Ganier, espero te hayas preparado muy bien porque te voy a finalizar. No surprise there, Jair Perez talking about changes, adjustments. What do you want to see him add to his toolkit tonight, Rodolfo? Well, Perez, he's become that all-around fighter, like he said. He said, I used to use a lot of my wrestling. This is a guy who started wrestling as a kid and then started evolving as a mixed martial artist. I think what I'd like to see is stick to that ground game, finish it off in fashionable style. Well, it's going to be action-packed. No surprise. You're going to see the action now. Si quieres disfrutar de mucha más acción, te invitamos a Combate Global, el evento de artes marciales mixtas que te hará vibrar cada semana. Llama ahora y consigue tus entradas de forma gratuita. No te lo pierdas, te esperamos ya.
Welcome back to Combate Global. We have a great one coming up. Penagos versus Jair Pérez. Let's go to Omar Amador to get us started. Entrando a la jaula, Genier Penagos. And then Penagos, you see him there, striding to la jaula. Confident, aggressive. He talks about his well-roundedness, just like his opponent. I think the key is, you know, he's a big guy, very, very strong. What do you think we're going to see early on in this fight, first round? Right from the start, he's going to just going to stand. That's his bread and butter. That's what he's on Conor. But what I'm curious to see is he said that he became obsessed after that last fight against Jose Ferreira. Ferreira basically took him down and just ground and pounded him to big. Mauled him. So. What did he adjust? Lupe uh, Perez, powerful guy too, you know? Maybe not as, as, maybe as fierce or as fast as Ferreira, but very similar. But on the contrary to Ferreira, Lupe has a lot better wrestling. So did he adjust? I want to see it. I want to see that obsession that he did. He trains out of Venezuela, but also does some camp in South Florida. I want to see what it's all about. You can tell me what you've done. The howler is the chance to show it. Take it away, Omar. Y ahora su oponente, Jair Pérez. You know what I've never come across in all my years, Rodolfo? Somebody who actually lost a fight, right? Oh, there's oh no, no, I thought I won that one. I want the other, especially the decision. I don't know, you went the wrong way. Jair Pérez against Justin Vasquez, uh, one of the stars right now in Combate Global. He says, hey, I thought I won that fight, but I went back and I made adjustments that I think are going to make me a better mixed martial, art, martial artist because of that fight. What do you think? I think from what I saw from the fight, Justin won. I think yeah. it was clear. And I think towards the end of that fight is that Lupin tried to say, well, let me see if I could wrestle him. And, and, and Vasquez just wasn't letting him. You know, he would dance around, move around, and it was very difficult for Lupin to do that. But either way, he did make some adjustments. I want to see what there is. I think what he could do is, or should show, this play is, he has finishing power. Why, why not, let's not put it to the test here. Try to go all out, try to get that KO or that submission if you're able to get down to your opponent. But the upper hand goes to the ground game to Rupa here. He has phenomenal wrestling, and I think that's going to be the key here against Bernard. Well, he has it, but will he use it? Two years older is Penagos height one inch for, for Jair Perez, but the four inch reach advantage going to Perez, how will he use it? For the takedown, for the striking, we are about to find out, but I expect an explosion when these two fighters collide and La Jaula, Omar Amador, get us started. Ya estamos listos para este combate pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división de peso ligero. We are ready for this bout set to three rounds of five minutes in the lightweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are Richard Green Jr., Ricardo Celis, Dorian Mirasola. Damas y caballeros, el tiempo ha llegado para un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, introducing in the blue corner. Entra con un récord de siete victorias, tres derrotas. He steps in with a record of seven victories and three losses. Vistiendo amarillo, wearing yellow. Registró un peso oficial de 157.4. He registered an official weight of 157.4. Es de Caracas, Venezuela, Genier Batosay. Ahora en la esquina roja su oponente now, his opponent in the red corner. Entra también con un récord de siete victorias, tres derrotas. He also steps in with a record of seven victories and three losses. Vistiendo el tricolor mexicano, vistiendo red, white and green. Registró un peso de 155.2 libras. He registered an official weight of 155.2 pounds. Es de Monterrey, México, Jair El Lupe. 
Y el referee para este encuentro es Christopher Minioki. Vamos, vamos. Quiero una pelea limpia. Escúchame todo el tiempo. Cuídate todo el tiempo. Si quieres tocar, tocar. Buena suerte. Stanley G, me quiz you. Midway, Spanish. You and Chris. On that Spanish, man. Yeah. He impresses me. I got to work. It's hard, it's hard here in South Florida. Cuban Spanish, I don't understand. But we are underway. No one does. <laughs> Eddie Benagos versus Jair Perez. Perez in the three colors. You see it there. Mexican flag. He proudly wears. And Eddie Benagos from Venezuela. Yeah, look, if this is a stand-up fight, we're in for a treat. I, I could just tell you that right now, Jimmy. Now, one thing is... Uh, I've been saying throughout this show that national pride a lot of times is on the line. Is it almost a, I'm not going to give the guy the satisfaction of me taking him down. You know, almost like, yeah, you know, I'm going I'm I'm to prove that I, that I can, you know, I'm more macho than you. If he's been saying that I've been obsessed <laughs> with working on my ground game, yes. And it shows the work that he put in in Venezuela, right? That he has that training, that he has that opponent in the gym, his teammate, to push him to correct his flaws. How sweet it is, right, to come back and say, I don't have to go to the States. I don't have to go to Brazil. I can just stay right here in my home. I have what I need to fix myself as a mixed martial artist, and I can show it in a big platform like Combate Global. I'm not seeing a lot of jabs from either one of these fighters. Benago stepping in with that left hook. I'm sorry, right hook, it's southpaw. Right hook over the top, left hand combination. Not a lot of setup, not a lot of stick. It's more like that, stepping in with power shots. Yeah, Lupe does. He does do a lot of the feints to throw you off. That in itself right there is a different technique. Benago's talking to Lupe saying, bring it, let's go. So far I'm liking what I see because they want to keep it standing. And, and well, again, both have that power. And, and I got to say that over the top. Lupe has been knocked out before. He has been knocked out before. It's one of those things that wakes you up, finding out you're mortal, finding out you're human, and you can get knocked out. A lot of times it changes a fighter, but... That is still very, very aggressive. Good break so far. This has been pretty much kickboxing and MMA gloves. Now, at what point will Perez pull the trigger and use his wrestling? That's where I want to know. Is it midway? Is it right, right from the start, right here in this first round? Now, there's still that feed out stage, Jimmy. That guy knows looking a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, I mean, much bigger for the weight class. Yeah, then Perez. Nice combination over the top. Great combo. And we've seen his development in his striking. Lupe has, has fixed that, that boxing. He's been specifically training in that art to perfect it. And we saw it again, Justin. Kind of goes physically, as you said, maybe even telling him, daring him to come forward. Oh, Ooh, right there, Perez whoa. with the jump knee. He came at him. Wondering when the takedown will come. First commitment oh. to the double leg, right into the guillotine. And this is where it gets interesting. How much of that work did Penagos put in? Can he escape this? Can he transition himself and maybe even obtain a submission victory? But I, I want to see it right here, right now. Right now, not looking so good for Penagos in this position. This is pretty much how it ended. His last fight ended. Yeah, Perez right now doing a good job. Those hips forward, ton of pressure on the guard. Penagos. Penagos here looking to see the hips are there, breaking those legs to push him off. Uh, Penagos, it, it, it's hard to lose the guard in these kind of situations. You're pressed up against La Jaula. You don't have a lot of uh, you know, room to shrimp your hips and all the technical stuff you do on a jiu-jitsu mat. It's a different kind of, of jiu-jitsu in MMA. But, but at the same time, it, it, it's, you got to know how to use that cage. you got to know how to use La Jaula right here to position yourself. Maybe you can find that opportunity to push him off the hips, but you just got to find the right time. Yeah, thinking Kimura from half guard, but Perez just putting too much pressure. That to be work. Now it's time to. Okay. Oh, oh! Went for a knee there. That, that might have been that illegal. Close. But yeah. That was close. Well, so far, so, so good for Pinagos. He got up. And no word from the referee, so. And he escaped that yeah. position from the ground. But 40 seconds left in a close round. 
can Penagos get this one back? That's the question right now. Perez starting to loosen up, feeling very confident after that takedown. I think it might have, you know, kind of opened up his striking, knowing that that's in his back pocket. I can hit that double leg. Good way to kick and get that knee leg. Then Penagos, good weaken him up. Nice counter knee right through the center. The talking oh, continues. Beautiful. Very aggressive. Perez banging all the way to the bell. Good stuff. Jair Penagos from Venezuela, his opponent, Jair Perez. Perez able to turn the, the, the power on at the end of run one. Not just getting the takedown, but being very, very aggressive with the striking. It's up to Penagos to kind of change things around in round number two. He needs to, and so far, I'm impressed what he's done so far. In fact, nice. Taking down Lupe here in this position, taking down with a single leg. Didn't expect that. But Perez looking for the guillotine, but nothing doing there without guard. But in that first round, he escaped from the ground and pound position. He was in a position where he was very difficult. He was able to transition himself and get it back to the feet. So, so far, that work that he put in has worked. Question is, is it enough? Perez very aggressive at the end of round number one. Not just the double leg, not just the ground and pound, but once they stood up again, flying knee, get more creative with his strikes. Then I goes aggressive early in round one, but stifled, I would say, back half of the round. But what I liked about Lupe in that last round, he just went for that one, two, low kick. And that technique, if, if, if you're able to just get that good combination, it could just be so good. That could just lead on to so much. In the southpaw stance, both fighters, I'm sorry, uh, Op opposite stances, but from that southpaw stance, you get that right hook over the top. Well, it's counted by the left hook over the top. Powerful hooks from both fighters, not a lot of jabbing. Not much jabbing. He did a lot of kicking there. He, he fainted and he went right down to the takedown. So good way of Penalos. Restricting him from follow following through. Oh, low blow. No surprise here as we see the judges, round number one, Jair Perez, 10-9, all three judges, but Anagos now suffering, and this is why. I don't know about that one, Jimmy. The toes catch the cup, you've Maybe. been there before, Maybe. it is the worst. Oh, all right, he nipped it. A nip is all it takes, you know that, Rodolfo, come on. You know as well as I do. Ready? Are you ready? But yes, you are right. Even a little lip, lip hurts. We have restarted. Brief break. Had five minutes. Didn't take all of it. Ah, lots of sweating almost there. For the high kick, a little bit of a slip. And that goes now. Just to figure out how to get some success in the stand-up. Doing well early. Now the, the activity of Perez. Activity like that, stringing strikes together very well. Blocked both of them, but fluid combinations. Perez told me he's been training with uh, Neto Quiroga on his striking. He did some of his work in San Diego with the uh, Victory MMA and then finished off the last few weeks over at Lions Office in Mexico. That body shot may have hurt. Then I goes, that foot right through the center. Once again, those are the scores from round number one. No surprise, there are Perez. 10-9, all three judges' scorecards. Got the takedown, was successful in the stand-up. 
I'm sure Bernard is. Ooh, he felt that one there, Jimmy. Yeah, Made him turn it up. Yeah, Pinago's starting to run out of options here. Perez looking for that finish. Well, this is a man you can tell in Perez who has who went back to the gym and cleaned up a lot of the aspects of his game. I'm really impressed with his fluidity. His combinations look very, very sharp. He's not over committing to the takedown, being very efficient about, with it. I was it. about to say that. Yeah, he's only about hand, count the times how many times he's gone for the takedown. Has stood to his striking. And Bernardo's here flipping the script, trying to take it to the ground. Perez having none of it. Good job scrambling back to his feet. That's a habit that, that, that some fighters have and when they kick and block with the hands. You're putting yourself at danger. Get you knocked out real yeah. quick. <laughs> oh, bad memories. But, <laughs> Veganos now, a little bit on the back foot. Jair Perez. Doing a great job staying aggressive, but staying loose, light on his feet. Beautiful. As they say, hand to foot, foot to hand. Putting everything together very, very well. Looking up at the clock, thinking about the guillotines, going hard for it. How sweet it would be, Jimmy, if Pentagos were to take this victory by submission. But no closed guard, there's just not enough pressure with the guillotine. Tried to do it from open guard. A good chance here, though, for Luke to take advantage and do some damage. Similar to what we saw in the first round, but they ended up taking it to the feet. Bernardo's found his way out. Yeah, 30 seconds left to go in round number two. Jair Perez on top, ground and pound. Is that success on the feet? Success with the takedown. Now the ground and pound on Jenner Penagos. Turtling up. Oh, they're giving away the back, Jimmy. They have only 10 seconds left. What can Perez do to take advantage? And it's unload once again on the feet. And Jair Perez in control of this fight at the end of round number two. And there is Veganos. Okay. In his corner, fatigued. He's very, very tired. Okay. Las combinaciones de box están con madre. Las patas están con madre. All right, your combination in the box is great. Tres golpes. Te está esperando. Necesitamos un tercero. He's waiting for you. But let's see. Is your single take that? Single leg take that? There was Pinagos was met there by a potential submission by Lupe, but then flipping the script here to the feet. Pretty much the story of this fight. Let's see what we have. Pinagos can break to the table with this last. And it's Perez finishing strong in both rounds. And there you see Jair Perez, Jair Penagos. Venezuela versus Mexico, and so far, Perez, impressive. He talked every time he spoke to us, every time he was interviewed, about the adjustments he made in camp, how much better he is than he was the last time we saw him, and we have seen fluid combinations. He's been trained well, and we've seen it executed well tonight. Yeah, the, the adjustments are there. We're seeing it within our very own eyes. Some fighters, they like to talk. You know, these guys are putting it into work. <laughs> if every fighter who talked about being better actually was better, <laughs> see a lot more world champions. Good way of checking that kick for Penagos. Now, if you're in Penagos' corner, yeah. obviously this has not gone well after, I would say, the mid-half of round number one. He hasn't found a way to get tactically back into this fight. What would you be telling him if you're his corner? I think we have to work the body for Perez. I, I think the opportunity is there. And not to be taken away with that feint because Rupert does a lot of that feint and he can really throw you off a bit. And, and I see Penagos telling him to come in. I think Penagos needs to oh, come nice. in. Oh, nice. Wow. Speaking of coming yeah, in. Yeah, well, that, that backfired there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, and now he's right hand. Him. Got to get out of that corner. He may be in trouble here. Lupe smells blood. Jimmy may be finished. Yes, it is. And that's it. Beautiful flurry from Jair Perez. He built up to it in the first and the second. 
He had that combination of flurry of punches, but it wasn't until the third round that he finally got a good grab and ended up getting, finishing the fight. Jair Penagos did not have an answer for the attack of Jair Perez, and you said Rodolfo turned up the heat and we got a boil in round number three. Great stuff for Jair Perez. We'll make it official when we come back. A un minuto 20 segundos del tercer asalto. One minute and 20 seconds into the third round. El referee Christopher Mignocchi se ve obligado a detener el combate. The referee Christopher Mignocchi stops the fight. Para el ganador, por knockout técnico, for the winner by TKO, Jair El Lupe. Moving to eight and three, Jair Perez did exactly what he said he was gonna do. Called his shot, pointed to the home run, and hit it. He did, he said he made adjustments. He said he worked on the stand-up game. We saw it here tonight. He said, I'm gonna stay away from wrestling. I wanna show that I am all more than just wrestling. And he did so here tonight, showing a high-level striking fest. And credit to Penagos, look, he just ran into that right. It's like a barricade. Boom, and then following up with a high kick from Lupe, just not stop, and at this point just cornered him, just couldn't stop the fury. It was like a tornado. Just couldn't stop this guy. Ripping through Panagos. Bam, right there, ran into it, Jimmy. And at this point, that shook him. That's why at this point when he Lupe cornered him here, he just couldn't get out. He couldn't find a position. And this just non-stop, no way in stopping Lupe. Great congratulations to Mexico. Lupe Perez, another victory inside La Aula. Outstanding combinations. Jair Perez dominated after the start of, you know, I would say halfway through round number one. The stats show that. It, it says it right there. And what's two to one takedowns, not bad, right, for a guy who is known for his wrestling. It, it was about his striking here. I'm sure he's a very proud man and all that work that he put into the gym saying that he's been working on that striking. Look at the total strikes. 150 to 126, wow. That is just impressive. And a 91% accuracy. Can't beat that. I'm a, I think I'm going to play with the, the blotter with those numbers, Jimmy. Uh, that would be a great <laughs> way to make some money. But when we have a fight left to go, Nathan Grayson all the way from the UK versus Lazaro Deron from Cuba. Difference in builds, difference in styles. Who comes out on top when we come back? It is rocking and rolling here at Univision Studios. That's right, our main event, Nathan Grayson versus Lazaro Deron. The question is, that's on everybody's mind, is what Road Warrior comes out on top? Fight because I wanted a better life. I wanted to make something of myself, leave an imprint on this, on this earth. My name's Nathan Grayson. I'm 34 years old and I'm from London. Me gustó siempre las peleas, entonces me incorporé a la disciplina de la MMA porque so, creí entendí que tenía condiciones. Me llamo La Salud Iron, Carbonel Bardé, vengo del país de Cuba. I've been retired five years, and um, to get this fight in his hometown, being five and all, excited is an understatement. Um, eh, él sabe que cogió un match bien exigente. Yo creo que lo naqueo en el, el primer round. Hey Nathan. Espero que hayas venido bien preparado porque te espera una pelea bien intensa. Lazaro, I'm experienced and you haven't seen nothing like me before. Be ready. And here is Omar Amador to get us started for this main event. Entrando a la jaula. Nathan Grayson! 
is Nathan Grayson, all smiles, taking on a Cuban in South Florida. You're from the UK, flew a long way to get here, uh, and he's excited about this. He hasn't fought since 2019, but he sees this as the a, a, a new start of his career. The MMA saved his life. He even said he was in a prison. If it wasn't for the gentleman that he met, he probably wouldn't be where he is right now. He's able to create his own brand. He's had a successful career as a mixed martial artist. He's happy to be back. At one point, he wasn't competing. Retirement was on his mind. Now he's back at it again. He's getting a, a, a breath of fresh air. And he's going up against a guy who's undefeated. How sweet it would be. He flew in all the way from the UK to South Florida to take an undefeated victory. And to get a victory, oh, how sweet that would be. He's coming up two losses. Last loss was against Francis Lombo, who actually won the Copa Combate. It'd be a picture perfect story if he gets that victory over the Cuban. And a loss was in Bellator. Can he erase that with a victory tonight? Omar, get us started. Y ahora, su oponente, Lázaro Dairo. Lázaro Dairon, you see him here, the Goat Shed Academy out here in South Florida. Not only good training, but um, confidence? Is that, is that the word we say, Goat Shed? Confident guy? Tons of confidence. <laughs> they reek of confidence. I didn't, I, I didn't say cocky. I didn't, no, no, no. I didn't say arrogant. I no. said confident. Confident. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that, and you need a lot of that, especially in this sport. His cousin alongside, also, they're known as the Smash Brothers, Jimmy. And Hasim, we've seen this man actually propose to his now wife inside La Jaula. But Dayron, this is the chance, what he's all about. We know that he has the power in his hands. He has knockout power. Back in August of 2022, he knocked out Jose Serial. And we know the history he has with wrestling. Top Notch was part of the national team of Cuba. In fact, that's the way he defected his country in Toronto. He came to the border, now he's here in the United States. He trained with the Oklahoma straight wrestling team, Jimmy. In fact, he, before he served as a, as a trainer, as a coach to that collegiate group. So, this is it. This is the test room. It is all the hype. It's all the stuff that we've been building up. He's going to be tested here tonight against Grayson, who has a lot more experience we're about to see here tonight. And look at the head-to-head. -head. Nathan Grayson, four years older than his opponent. Two-inch height advantage, but the slight reach advantage belonging to Lazaro Deron. It's about where this fight goes. Will the wrestler take it down, or will Nathan Grayson have some success on the feet with that awkward, rangy boxing style that he has? That's the question. Well, Omar Amador will kick it off. Estamos listos y la audiencia lo siente. We are ready and the crowd feels it. Para este compromiso pautado a tres asaltos de cinco minutos en la división de peso gallo. We are ready to continue with much more action. And it's in this fight set the three rounds of five minutes in the Bantam Way division. Los jueces son, the judges are Lorenzo Toledo, Richard Green Jr. y Ricardo Celis. Damas y caballeros, ustedes lo saben, ha llegado el momento de un combate global. Introducing out of the blue corner, presentando en la esquina azul, entra con un récord de seis victorias, cuatro derrotas. He steps in with a record of six victories, four losses. Vistiendo rojo y blanco, wearing white and red. Registró un peso oficial de 135.6 libras. He stepped in at an official weight of 135.6 pounds. Es de London, England, Nathan Grayson. Y su oponente en la esquina roja. Now his opponent in the red corner. Entra con un record invicto de cinco victorias sin derrotas. He stepped in with an undefeated record of five victories, no losses. Vistiendo rojo, azul y negro, wearing red, blue and black. Registró un peso oficial de 135.8 libras. He registered an official weight of 135.8 pounds. De La Habana, Cuba, fighting out of Miami, Florida. Lázaro, el cazador, Dairo. El juez para este combate, el referee for this fight, Juan Tommy Santana. Oh. 
Guys who went through the rules in the back, I expect a good thing for a fight. Protect yourselves at all times, and when I say stop, stop. Question blue, question red, touch close if you wish. Come out fighting. There you see the tall, rangy striker from England taking on the Cuban wrestler known for his ground and pound. And we are underway. Nathan Grayson versus Lazaro Dayron. A bit of flashing to get things going. Jimmy, what I, was, what I was noticing is when Dayron was getting his flowers, he has the crowd behind him. Grayson was just smiling. He's like, oh, I'm going to get you get the flowers, but let me wait for the bell ring. Great. He knows about the pressure, too, of fighting in front of your hometown crowd, fighting while you're undefeated. Nathan Grayson's been through it all. When we talked about this, Jimmy, look at that fighting stance from Grayson. Has the hands open instead of having that clean yeah. fist. Not too many fighters could adapt to that, but hey, to each his own. Nathan Grayson in the red and white. His opponent, Rosado Dayron. Oh, he's having fun. Too. Look in at that the white, smile. blue, uh, the, I'm sorry, in the red, Loving blue, it. and black. I am definitely loving it. They run the very technical series. Ooh! Nice right hand over the top. And he has powers in those shoulders, Jimmy. Grayson much taller, so far doing a good job playing with that range. So he's had the slight reach advantage. Going to Dayron, but right now Grayson's standing very, very tall. An awkward style. A good way of Grayson to move around when he, had, he smelled that takedown, not in this case. Good way of taking himself to the howler here, using it, spreading his hips. Good drive oh, on the takedown. And this is where Dayron just loves to pick his opponent apart. Hence, El Cazador, translation to the hunter. And this is it, this is where he does his work, uh, Jimmy. Uh, you talked about his ground and pound. Oh, How well he does with those short punches. Good job from Grayson getting back to his feet. Grayson, though, it's more like he's just picking his target, moving around slightly. Look. And look, you can tell the respect is there. Yeah. The respect is there for both of each other. Each other. Just takes one mistake, and Tehran in with the takedown, and got it done quickly. Didn't waste a lot of energy. Woo! Drove through well. Now both fighters trading punches. Tehran dropping his hands against the fence. <laughs> a little Grace, bit. Grace had just told Tehran, keep going. A little bit of trash talk. <laughs> Don't know how good Daron's English is. Well, I'm sure you got you got that. <laughs> I think you get the gist of yeah, it. Doesn't matter. He didn't need Google good. Translator for that. Oh, he almost ran into that knee, Jimmy. Yeah, it's a good shot stopper. Uppercuts, knees, and, and how many short times? Yep. And we've seen that many times, Jimmy. When you face a wrestler, if you find the right timing to land that knee, that could be it for you. Grayson right now, you know, with the time he's had off, hasn't had a fight since 2019. Rodolfo, he's looked very smooth so far. Very smooth, like he hasn't missed a beat. Yeah. But Dayron needs to be careful is that right back leg. Because Grayson is just waiting for him to go for the takedown and just land that knee. But good way of Dayron working the body and using that overhand right. Nice leg kick. You saw it spinning yeah. Grayson around a bit. Wasn't ready for that kind of attack from the Cuban wrestler. Trains the, the goat shed here in Miami. And now it's Dayron starting to open up a little bit, starting to feel confident. Back in Grayson to La Jaula. Grayson calling him in, a little taunting there. Now, it comes a point, Jamie, yes, you're happy to be oh, back. Oh, nice jab. Beautiful timing on that. Kind of took um, Dayron off his feet. It almost feels like, like Grayson was just playing with Dayron there, trying to calm him. A lot of mind games, but great way of tripping him, just taking him down. Beautiful job from the Cuban wrestler. Good inside trip there, Jamie. Putting the pressure on Grayson, those long legs. What can he do from the card right now on half butterfly? That's how you take down a tall tree, break the trunk. Hard to submit from this position. Sweep sometimes that, that you know, what would be Grayson's left side, but Dayron right now very heavy with the hips. Not easy, not gonna be easy to sweep that guy. Dayron is so good here. He just knows how to control his body, pressure his opponent. 
But you just can't let him go. Right, but Grayson has done a very good job wrapping up the arms. Yep. We haven't seen that devastating ground and pound that we right. know he's, he's capable of. We haven't seen it. That's the experience. He's been here before. And that's right. Calm in the eye of the storm. That's been Nathan Grayson so far. But the offense of Lazaro Dayron on display in round one. Welcome back to Combate Global, our main event, second round about to start versus the Cuban, I want to say wrestler, he's shown his mixed martial arts skill in this first round against right there Nathan Grayson from London, Grayson in the white and red, his opponent, that's right, Rosario Dayron in the blue, red and black. Yeah, I know it's very early in the fight, Jimmy, but I just kind of just hear the day runs a little bit more tired. Right? Maybe just slightly bit. Well, he's, he's used a lot of effort in round yeah. number one. And, and, and Nathan Grayson, although, you know, we'll look at the official scorecards in a minute when they come out. I would say it was probably 10-9 day run. But, you know, Grayson's been loose. He's been relaxed. He hasn't put a lot behind any right. one particular punch. Been very efficient with his striking. Right, very composed, very relaxed. Very fresh. Beautiful yeah. double leg. That's beautiful timing. That's how they That's teach fresh. you how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and you get to that level. And then you start incorporating the other arts, and then you're just a machine. Oh, and follow That's amateur wrestling, Cuba, great team every year. Yeah. And That's what they say, Jimmy, when we have to go for scoring. Yeah. Rosario Dayron, 10 9, all three judges' scorecards. Nathan Grayson may be conserving energy, but you gotta wonder when he's gonna spend it. Right now he is down one round to none in a three round fight. He needs to come back strong in round number two. It would be here, uh, Jimmy, that if you have that strong wrestling base in MMA, it's a, it's a good way to just kick off your career and then build up to the other arts. But right. over time it's evolved, you know, MMA has just evolved now, but that, that was what, what was said earlier on. Going to Z guard. Is Nathan Grayson trying to relieve some of that physical pressure, but the heavy hips of Lazaro Dayron not allowing any space at all from the Londoner. He's just keep, keeping him in. But what I noticed in that first round, Grayson was very composed and just waiting for any mistakes from Dayron, any loose hands, waiting to capitalize on it. And I think that that's the game plan right here for Grayson. But at what point, Rodolfo, do you have to start making your opportunities, right? Because you're kind of waiting for Daron to make a mistake. He's not making very many. You're down one round to none. So far, we're almost halfway through round number two. Once again, this looks like a Daron round so far. When do you start selling out? Right. right. Well, well, right now. And I'll tell you why. You know that you lost that first round. Because we do we have got, open scoring. Got Coaches open can scoring. see it, right? So you have to push the pace right here. You can't just sit there and just wait for the sky to come down. There's, there's such a thing as being too efficient, right? Not spending enough energy on your offense. Another beautiful, almost knee pick from the opposite oh, side. Look how he puts that knee right there on the side of Grayson. Crucifix position. Oh. It's exactly where Grayson doesn't want to be. Very dangerous stuff here. Grayson just can't find the day to get out of this. Well, able to free his left arm. Look at the stats so far. Dayron, 33 punches, 11 kicks. Grayson, 38 and 12. Get them out. And look at the accuracy from Dayron. Why so much of this on the ground where he really can't miss? This is it. Full mount. Two minutes left in round number two. And Grayson, again, he is. Arm triangle. Oh. Grayson, or Dayron hanging on to daylight. Now Grayson trying to fight his way out of this, and Dayron letting it go. 
Didn't want to give up that top position and angle out and really commit to the arm triangle. And you know, Jimmy, in this position at the bottom, man, how exhausting, how difficult it is. It's the absolute worst. It's grappling under an, uh, an avalanche. The only way to describe it. Deron doing a great job keeping the pressure on. Short elbows, short punches. And there he is, look at that left hand. He's grabbing on to hoping that Deron makes a mistake, but he's, he's doing none whatsoever here. Yep, usually wrist controls triangle setups. We haven't come anywhere near that, even with the long legs of Grayson. Good way of pushing him off. Right now, at that point, those long leg up kicks will be coming in. But good control so far from there. Not allowing that. Good, good up kick. Clearly missed. Everything behind it, but Lazaro Daron, only five fights into his professional career, is really looking That's like good. a veteran in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Beautiful job clearing oh, the legs. That was just awesome. Push the leg to the side. That right there. You said five fights, but man. Veteran move. Right. 23 seconds. It's counting down. Nathan Grayson looking at his comeback, perhaps falling apart in the failing seconds of round number two. Dayron looking to keep it going. Can he get the stoppage before the bell? Seconds left to go. And Nathan Grayson will see you round three. Wow. He can't hurt you, I'm telling you. You've got a scratch in the nose. Perfecto. Mountad, numero uno. Submission dos. Mountad y golpe. Eh, bien, todo bien. Muy bien, muy inteligente. Good. Tactica bien, ya de bien, pero doble, ya, más, ya, bro. Ahora tu patada, patada solo patada. Primero ya patada. Venga, golpe y patada. No de solo patada. ¿Me entiendes? Todo bien, bro. Todo muy bien. Todo perfecto. Se quiere más agua. Enfocar. Final round. Enfocar. Welcome back. Combate Global, our main event. It is Nathan Grayson in the red and white. His opponent from Cuba, the standout wrestler. That's right, Lazaro Deron. But Deron has proved to be not just the better wrestler, but the better mixed martial artist so far throughout this fight. Yeah, I see in his corner just told him, keep kicking him, keep kicking him. And that's how you break down a taller fighter. He's doing what he needs to do, just keep breaking him down with his legs. He has long legs. Very effective with those. Well, good right hand from Daron straight to the takedown again. Right. Oh, right into mount. It's just wow. Now this time, over four minutes left to go in the round. Oh. Saved by the bell last time, you could argue. Lots of time here now, Jimmy. Bell ain't coming for a while. So difficult to escape that hip pressure right up against La Jaula. And it just powers through right here. Maybe an arm triangle. Arm triangle could yeah, be finished it here. Be it, Jimmy. Arms a little bit high, can't exactly sit out and put more pressure on it. The fence is in the way, that's why he wasn't able to finish that. Wisely lets it go. Yep. Full mount, short ground and pound. This is looking worse and worse for Nathan Grayson. All day for day run. Kind of flying up there. It's like an inverted... Uh... And it's over! Stoppage by TKO. Don't know if there are any fight stamp stopping punches there, but it was death of a thousand cuts. Wow. Impressive. Lozano Deron getting it done. Impressive. Still undefeated. We'll make it official after the break. A un minuto, 29 segundos del tercer asalto. One minute and 29 seconds in the third round. El referee se ve obligado a parar la pelea. The referee stops the fight. 
para el ganador por knockout técnico, for the winner by technical knockout de la tierra que grita patria y vida Cuba, Lázaro, el cazador Dairo. You hear the chants of Cuba, we wondered if being in basically home turf, South Miami, would be an issue uh, for this young man. We found out that it doesn't matter at all. Lazaro Deiran is ready to go, and that was on display from opening bell to closing TKO. Just amazing, that power, and then that ground and pound is just vicious. Once this man gets you on the ground, there's no way of getting out. Grayson felt the power. He flew all the way from UK. Hey, maybe he got to see a side or two in Miami, Florida, but unfortunately he was met with this beast right here, Deiran. What a vicious man. Continues to just amaze us inside La Jaula. How do you stop this guy? You can't stop this guy. Once he gets you in the takedown, there's no way of getting out. Also, 6-0. and oh, That is early on in someone's MMA career, and this guy is showing next-level transitions. You know, takedown right to mount, right? Good ground and pound, right. efficient, didn't waste a lot of energy. Sky's the limit. But what was impressive was what we talked about when you know, when Grayson was on his back, was able to grab the fit, push it away quickly right there, get back to where he was, and just ground and pound. I and mean, that's just amazing stuff. Even though he's at 6-0 and now, it shows how he's improved in that experience as a fighter over and over. That's just awesome. You can be good, you can be great, you can be respected. But being feared is really the great thing in MMA. When I look at this performance tonight in our main event, we have an undefeated fighter who might be feared by the rest of the division. But next week, uh, can we call it Viva Mexico? We have three standout Mexican fighters fighting next week. Can't wait to see it. Oh, I'm excited when you get Mexicans, you know, fight like a Mexican, we say here. Mucho mas acción, that's exactly, they bring it all the time. Taking on Martin. Davila, the last Inca out of Peru, representing in also the United States. Looking forward to this one. Fast paced. Ernesto Stallion, man, good guy. For everybody involved in Combate Global, once again, we brought the absolute action tonight. Thank you to all the fighters, all the fans, everyone behind the scenes. I'm Jimmy Smith for my broadcast partner, Rodolfo Roman and El Jefe, Campbell McLaren. We will see you next week in La Jaula. Don't miss it.